Kaylee, I'm going to read to you Pocket for Corduroy. You see that? We read that before. So, Mama, turn the pages as I read to you. So, here we go. Late one summer afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundromat. Lisa carried along her toy bear, Corduroy. The laundromat was a very busy place at this hour. Now, Corduroy, you sit right there and wait for me, Lisa said. I'm going to tell to help with our wash. Corduroy was patiently, waited patiently, then he suddenly perked up his ears. Lisa's mother was saying, be sure to take everything out of your pockets, Lisa, dear. You don't want to want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. Pockets, said Corduroy to himself. I don't have pockets. He slid off the chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of, he said, and he began to look around. First, he came to a pile of fancy towels and washcloths but nothing was the right size or color. Then he saw a huge stack of colorful clothes in a laundry bag. There ought to be something in there to make a pocket out of, he said. Without hesitation, he climbed inside the bag, which was filled with pieces of wet laundry. The dampness didn't bother Corduroy in the least. This must be a cave, he said. I've always wanted to live in a dark, cool cave. Later, when Lisa looked for her bear, he was gone. Oh, Mommy, Corduroy isn't here. Where, where, where I left him? I'm sorry, honey, said her mother, but the laundromat will be closing soon and we must be getting home. Lisa did not want to leave Corduroy, but her mother insisted. You can come back tomorrow. She said, I'm sure you'll find him. As they left, a young man wearing an artist's beret was taking his wet laundry out of a bag, the very bag Corduroy had discovered. Before he knew it, Corduroy was being tossed, together with all the sheets, shirts, shorts, and slacks inside the dryer. But just as the artist was shutting the glass door, Corduroy tumbled out onto the floor. Uh Uh-oh. How in thunder did that bear ever get mixed up with all my things, the artist wondered. Poor Corduroy was was damp all over. The least I can do for him is to give his overalls a good drying, said the man. He unbuttoned Corduroy's shoulder straps and put his overalls in the dryer. Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning around, but the artist became inspired. This would make a wonderful painting, he said as he took a sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling colors. I can hardly wait to get back to my studio. Finally, the dryer stopped whirling and the man gathered up the clothes. Then he helped Corduroy put on his warm, dry overalls. All at once, the manager of the laundromat called, Closing time! Everybody out! Corduroy was gently placed on top of a washing machine. I wonder who that bear belongs to, said the artist as he was leaving. He should, he should have his, his, his name someplace. He's too, a, he's too fine of a fellow to be lost. As soon as the lights were turned off, Corduroy began searching again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. Maybe it's snow, he said. I've always wanted to play in the snow. He accidentally tipped over the open lidded box and suddenly he was covered with soft, slippery soap flakes. Gradually, Corduroy began to slip and slide. Oh, what fun, he said with a smile. I've always wanted to ski down a steep mountainside. Whee! He landed, he landed paws first in an empty laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking through the bars. I've never wanted to live inside a cage like a bear in a zoo. 
But by now, Corduroy oh, felt drowsy. Oh, oh. And soon he nodded off to sleep. Next morning, when the manager came to open the laundromat, there was Lisa waiting. I left something here yesterday, he, she explained. May I look around? Certainly, said the manager. My customers are always leaving things. Lisa was searching under the chairs and in the back of the washing machines when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you're looking for, senorita? Yes, yes, he's my best friend, shouted Lisa. She reached in the pocket. She reached in and picked Cordero out of the basket. So this is where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time I took you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran down the street, holding Corduroy tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket, asked Lisa. That very morning, Lisa sold a pocket on Corduroy's overall. And here is a card I made with your name on it for you to keep tucked inside, she said. I've always wanted a purple pocket with my name tucked inside, said Corduroy, as Lisa and as he and Lisa nuzzled noses. Oh, little Corduroy. That's the end. Night, night.